taught me a lot. She really did. She taught me how to be a mom, how to be, you know, a wife and mother and take care of a home and work. The thing I remember about her most is just, you know, how loving she was to all of us. She, she just was um, a very beautiful person inside and out. And unfortunately, this epidemic, she got wrapped up in it and she couldn't, um, she couldn't get herself to shake it. With the heroin, I probably watched her go on and off with it for about 10 years. A few days after, you know, I talked to her, we got the call that, that they had found her. And they found her actually in the backyard of an abandoned house and it was, it was on the west side of Cleveland. It was like a passerby or a neighbor or something that had noticed um, that, that, that there was a body there and called 911. That was one of the hardest things I ever had to do, was turn my back and tell her I couldn't see her anymore. And then when, when I would see her at grandma's every once in a while, just to see her deteriorate from one time to the next time, physically and um, her appearance, was um, shocking. I, I would look in her eyes and I knew it was her, but I couldn't believe the, um, the way that she fell apart because, because of the drugs. She definitely was in pain, but the doctors would prescribe her pain meds, and I was surprised at how much she actually you know, got prescribed from doctors in terms of um, the Percocets and, you know, um, Oxycontin, the Vicodin. the Vicodin. I think that really was something that spiraled into her going to heroin. When you're addicted to the pain meds, too, then you know, your next step is to go to heroin. So I think it kind of progressed that way. So I think, you know, bottom line, the system also failed her. This epidemic, it, it's... It doesn't discriminate. It's it's affecting people of all walks of life, of all um, you know social and economic backgrounds, people of all you know gender, color. It's it just doesn't discriminate.